Hey, y'all. There we go. Okay. How is everybody this evening? Make sure you tell me what you're up to this weekend. I'm going to go ahead and get things set up here so I can see comments. Because that would be ideal, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. We're going to be scrapping these super cute pictures of my daughter, Sophia. Here we go. Friday Live. That's the thing. That's the fun. We're going to jump right in. Okay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So we're doing a 9 by 12 tonight. It's interesting, though, that the view on my camera and the view on my screen are two different things. Okay, I think that that'll do. <laughs> I believe my son has uh, adjusted my viewing height here because I seem to be showing more of my desk than normal, which is fine. I just... Uh, wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> so I'm gonna trim down the border here on these photos. There we go. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining me. Always good when I'm not just talking to myself, though I will. Given the opportunity, I will carry on quite the conversation on my lonesome. <laughs> it may not be the most exciting conversation, but Oh, honey, I can talk until I am blue in the face. For real, for sure. I can. So these photos are some annual photos that I took of my daughter, Sophia. I've already scrapped her sister's annual photos. And they're with a fancy camera that I got a while back uh, as a Christmas present. Because we used to go to photo studios. And photo studios are expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you have five kids, photo studios are very expensive. And it ended up costing us, I don't know, $100, $120 just to get new pictures to the kids every year. I mean, if you go through the school system, it's even more than that to get those packs of pictures. But I just thought, well, maybe if I had my own camera, A, I could control what the pictures looked like. <laughs> Because quite often the ones you get from the school are, are not, not very pretty. They're, they're just maybe not exactly what you were, were hoping for, you know? So uh, I thought, well, maybe I could take my own. With a little bit of practice, I did figure it out. My husband decided it was cheaper to buy a nice camera to take these photos every year. And I could use it for other occasions like Easter and Christmas and things along that line. And take really nice photos of the kids to scrap. And he wouldn't have to deal with wrangling the kids at a photo studio <laughs> it ends up being cheaper all around because I print my own photos here at home so I can control the cost which is really nice hey Michelle welcome welcome happy Friday is right my girls were so tired today they passed out at 7 40 that is unheard of that never ever happens. So I was quite shocked by that. Very, very surprised. I have two photos of my darling Sophia because I couldn't decide which one that I liked more. So I decided to scrap them both. She's just such a gorgeous girl. She's so photogenic. She's so photogenic. I absolutely adore it. Hey, Mary Deb, welcome, welcome. Aren't they just the cutest photos? Oh, she just is, just a cute little bean. A cute little bean, that is for sure. So now, I knew I wanted to use this Dear Lizzie collection for these photos, and I've kind of been hoarding these photos knowing that I was gonna use this collection because the blue is spot on for the blue in, these, in this paper, and it has the same green, and I thought, it's meant to be. <laughs> Who am I to argue with the scrappy gods? Am I right? So clearly this was meant to be. And also these papers were just sitting here 
and they just fell in such a way that this blue dot was along the side of this heart paper, which I love. I love this heart paper. It's gorgeous. So I'm thinking I may use that as a base for my photo somehow, maybe putting it kind of like this. I'll probably cut off two strips and back to back it and then use it as kind of the base for where my photos are gonna land and then just embellish around that. That's what I'm thinking. My mind may change as I look through the rest of the supplies, but that with that just falling, you know, just perfectly like that, I thought, hmm, <laughs> that might be meant to be. Got some more of that blue. Now this, this collection is not, not brand new. This is as of last year. And I love it. It was one of my favorite collections from last year. I bought almost all of it because I just thought it was gorgeous. And this paper, I think I bought three of. It's just beautiful. Oh, so pretty. It is so, so pretty. I don't think it's right for this layout, but it's gorgeous. I also have tossed a couple of, uh, tossed this, I know this one for sure. I think there was another textured paper in here. But I have this one, which is kind of cool. It might be able to bring in a little bit of that maybe behind the photo. So that might be neat. This is the specialty paper. It's got like a, a shiny silver foil, which would be cool. I think actually I'll probably end up fussy cutting at least part of that out. It's really thick though. And so that's interesting. We've got this paper, which has kind of a rainbow stripe happening. Hey Marlena, hey Lee, hey Angela, welcome, welcome, you didn't miss me. 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, U.S. Central Standard Time, every Friday. I always do it at the same time so that uh, it's easier to remember. <laughs> and that way I don't have to announce, oh, by the way, I'm scrapping live tonight at this time because uh, you'll already know. So this one's kind of cool. It's got a bench of pens and pencils, which I should fussy cut some of those out. I did quite a few layouts with this when I first got it. And then this was the other specialty paper that I added to it. This was not in the collection. It's just one of those, you know, silver foil, uh, not foil, glitter paper that I got from the local Hobby Lobby. And I saw there was so much silver in this particular collection and holographic foil that I thought this would be perfect and I still do. I think I might, what I'm thinking I might do is either use this or that embossed rose paper. Y'all can help me decide behind my photos somehow, whether as a mat or as just a piece of, of layering not sure yet but I'm thinking one of these would be great to layer into the layout both would work both would work so you'll have to let me let me know which one you think looks better and then I have the six by eight paper pad I got the little enamel shapes the puppy stickers and then I had the it looks like the frames, the chipboard, and the ephemera. And whatever was left, I just sort of, oops, sorry for the noise, stuck this, stuck them all in here. So I need a container to dump these into. Let's see. Oh, there's one. I usually have one on my desk, but for some reason it got grew legs and walked away. <laughs> you like the silver? You just got that collection today. Awesome. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Hey, Leisha. Yes, you got here right at the perfect time. Perfect time. I just started. So I'm going to dump everything in here and that'll make it easier for me to go through it. I've got the frames, which I love. They're so cute. And then I've got chipboard. And what I did with the chipboard is I used a little bit of baby powder on the back and it gets rid of the sticky so that I can like audition 
as uh, Missy Whidden says, audition them on my page without it sticking to things. And you've got to add additional adhesive to chipboard anyway. So yeah, I've got chipboard, I've got ephemera, I've got cut aparts, I think. Got a few cut aparts in here. And I know I have, oh, you know what? I don't think I have the ephemera. I think I have cut aparts and I think I have stickers that I have taken the sticky off of. Although some are just a hair still sticky. <laughs> Uh, some of them I didn't quite get all the sticky off apparently, but that's all right. They're doing just fine and I can just pull them out and try them. So that's really cool. All right. So what's the, uh, what's the, Hey Brenda, what's the idea here? Do we want to do the silver glitter or the rose embossed paper? We need, I want to incorporate at least one of these in my layout. I'm really excited about the puffy stickers. <laughs> I haven't even used them yet. They're just so pretty. They're very dimensional though. That's kind of unusual. I guess you can't really see. But they are really thick. I don't know how I, sh how I should put them so you can see. I think that does it. They're, they're kind of thick. I love how they feel, but they are really thick. Interesting. Not as thick as an enamel dot, but still pretty thick. Interesting. And then I have the little enamel shapes, which I think are thinner than those, uh, <laughs> than those puffy stickers. <laughs> silver glitter, silver glitter, silver glitter. It would be easier to use the silver. So what I'm thinking is I know that I have, I think I'm gonna bring in a sheet. I know green is not a color I normally go for. And so I was thinking that I would go for the green right behind the photo because I don't normally go for it. And that way it would for sure get used. Because quite often I'll get to the end of, of, a, of a little paper pad like this and all that's left are colors that I don't really like. <laughs> it's like, hmm. <laughs> that's not ideal. <laughs> I may pull that back out, but for now we're gonna move it out of the way. I think the general consensus is the silver. I will use this on another layout. I promise you I will use this on a, another layout coming very soon. I will do it, I promise. Maybe next live, we'll see if I remember. But I am gonna do a couple of layouts from this collection since I have it pulled out. So we're gonna use the silver. What I'm thinking is to use it kind of as a, a layer but I won't waste it. I'll cut strips and then paper piece around because it's gorgeous. And that will really help the photo pop off of this busy pattern here is what I'm thinking. So something like this and that'll help it kind of explode off of that background. Ah, I think I like that. I think I do. Okay. So what I want to do is a white cardstock with a border. So this paper is from Vicki Booten, or well, it came from Vicki Booten. She gave, sent it to me with a prize that I won. It's from Basil and it's supposed to be eight and a half by 11 paper, but it's a lot longer than that. It's actually about 11 and a half by nine, eight and a half. No, it's eight and a half by 11 and a half because it's longer, it's not wider. It's actually eight and a half by 11 and a half, which makes it perfect for nine by 12 layouts because you can just put a border around the outside and it's nine by 12. Now, let me look at these little florals and see which one I like better. I like the bright pink, but I think this piece actually, this little bit of red actually matches those better. Not that it truly matters if we're real, <laughs> but I can cut this into strips too and create a nice little border with that. And then what I'm thinking is to do something like this coming down the center with strips of blue on either side. 
and then have my photos. I always go, well, I always mostly go pretty high on the page. So I think I might come a little bit lower on the page just for something a little bit different. And uh, just kind of uh, have them right here and embellish around it is what I'm thinking. I like the look of that a lot. So let's go with it. Let's get started, shall we? What is everybody's plans for the weekend? Hey, Kelly, Lee Marie, hello, hello. I will use, how about this? I'll make you a deal. I'll use the rose next Friday live. I will use it. I'll hold on to this kit, this collection. It's not a kit, this collection for next week as well. And I will use the rose next time. That way we can use both because I do really love that rose. It's gorgeous. I really do. So I cut some strips since we don't have a full piece. Normally I would use like a full 12 by 12 and just gut it, cut out the inside so I'm not wasting it. But in this case, I'm just gonna cut strips. Hello, hello to Arctic Wolves. Welcome to the scrap stream. And yes, someone mentioned Inky Quill's scrap stream. Who is that? Marlena, yes. I'm a huge fan. You know I'm a huge fan of Inky Quill. And you know what? It's not even so much her scrapping style. I just enjoy listening to her. <laughs> I just think she's kind of fun to listen to. And her style has changed to a point where uh, I don't really... Uh, it's not my jam, I guess is how I'm going to put it. It's, it's just not my cup of tea anymore. However, I love listening to her stories about her family. Uh, she talked about how they just lost their their uh, bunny, Poppet, who was just such a sweet little thing. And I just love that she's so open and shares about her family and shares about what's going on with them, and I just really enjoy it. Yay, Christine, oh, thank you. I will write that down because you comment often, and I always feel a little weird calling you two Arctic wolves. <laughs> And I'm so glad you made it. I'm so glad you made it to the stream. I really enjoy having lots of y'all to chat with. It makes it so much more fun than if I sit here and talk to myself, though I will. <laughs> if necessary, I will. <laughs> so I'm just gonna cut up some strips of this silver, about half inch strips usually works pretty well. And then I'll use quarter inch tape behind my photo mats so that I can get just that hint of silver behind the photos and that will help them really pop off the background. You definitely will see them. Hello, hello, welcome, welcome. Yours says soar by a core, but if, I, if I'm remembering correctly, it's Melissa? Did I remember? Am I wrong? <laughs> I need to write this down because y'all are in here all the time and it's just shameful for me not to remember. It really is. I make no excuses. It's shameful. All right, so I've got my little quarter inch double-sided tape and we're gonna get started. But yeah, that's, I've been uh, just using this paper specifically for nine by 12 layouts because it's just the perfect size. You know, eight and a half by 11 and a half is perfect for me to put a little border around the outside and bam, nine by 12. Love that, then I don't have to cut down a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock and I have these random weird <laughs> three inch, <laughs> three inch pieces. <laughs> and a three inch piece isn't normally big enough for matting photos because the photo's three inches. You know, so then I just have this like random pieces of paper. You'll be lurking for a while. Yes, I got it, Melissa. <laughs> I am so glad my Aussie friends can join. Aussie, sorry. Aussie friends can join me. Are y'all, I have heard y'all are getting some relief from the rain, but that some areas are now getting hail or relief from the rain. Relief from the fires via the rain. But then there was a video out the other day of the. <laughs> Poor Australians 
getting attacked by huge, huge pieces of hail. And I thought, really? <laughs> Come on. I think you've dealt with quite enough. Definitely don't need more. Hey, Renee. Welcome, welcome. From New York. Yes. Is it? I, I, I'm going to assume, Renee, that it's pretty cold for y'all this week because it's cold here in Mississippi. So I'm going to assume y'all are pretty chilly as well. Most of the weather that we get kind of heads straight up that way to the northeast. So I, I would assume y'all are feeling a breeze or two. It has been in the 30s and 40s Fahrenheit here in the U.S. And while I'm not 100% sure what that converts to, it's cold. <laughs> it's almost freezing. 32 degrees Fahrenheit is freezing, which I believe is, is that zero degrees Celsius? I am not the most brilliant science mind, but I think think that's right. So it's about zero degrees Celsius to slightly higher than that. Okay. Yep, you've been cold too. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I have some family in Michigan and they have just kind of not sure what to make of this winter because normally they get Lots of snow, and freezing temps all the time, and it's been fairly, not warm, it's been comfortable, I would say, and they've been a little confused, <laughs> a little confused by that. What do you, what do, you do with that? Uh, but then they got a couple of cold blasts from old Canada, and uh, yeah. It was a bit rough for a while too. Lots of ice, I think. They haven't really gotten a lot of snow, but they've gotten a lot of ice. We actually have not had any snow and no ice this winter so far, which is very unusual. Very, very unusual. We do normally in January get, if not snow, then we'll get a uh, freezing rain type of storm. And then we'll have a lot of ice just hanging on the trees, all over the streets, that kind of thing. No fires or rain here. Oh, wow. Red dust storms. I mean, no fires is good. Rain would be nice, I'm sure. <laughs> I saw some areas were getting rain, but uh, which was good because I believe those are the areas that had some uh, fire issues. Yes. 70 degrees Fahrenheit in Arizona. <laughs> this country is crazy. <laughs> we have all climate zones, I swear. <laughs> we have all the climate zones in one country in one day. Yes, it's very, very cold. It's oh, cold, snowy Colorado. You know, I grew up in Michigan, and they do normally get quite a lot of snow, but they haven't gotten much. So I've kind of missed the snow since moving down here 14 years ago, because we get it so rarely down here. And I just, I don't know. I miss, I miss the, the playing in the snow. And I mean, you know, you can't play for long because if it's cold, <laughs> If it's cold enough for there to be snow, it's pretty cold. <laughs> okay. A small bon hello, a small bonsoir. Is that did I translate correctly? A little hello from Quebec, Canada as I completely demolish the beautiful French language. I took <laughs> one year of French, or was it two? I, it all blurs together in high school. I took a year or two of French, and while I loved it and enjoyed it, I was terrible at it. 
I am absolutely terrible at speaking languages. I can read them usually, or at least decipher them to some degree. But speaking them, nah. I think I've been in the South too long. I can't get the accent correct. Oh no! Funnel spiders? All right. I'm afraid to ask Marlena <laughs> what a funnel spider is. <laughs> Low 40s? Yeah, well, we've been there too, which is, we're in Mississippi here. And we're, we were experiencing low 40s and into the 30s. There was one day we got down to 27 or something like that. Now, we didn't get any snow, which is unfortunate because I would have liked just a little snow. See, I want about an inch and a half. <laughs> is that oddly specific? <laughs> just enough snow to go play in, but not enough snow to make it impossible to drive. Because let me tell you, these folks don't know how to drive in snow. They don't understand. You must go pack up and leave. <laughs> she wishes she hadn't read that. Oh no, oh no, more poisonous spiders. I don't know how Australians survive in Australia because the sheer number of things trying to kill you <laughs> is quite numerous. <laughs> I mean, y'all must be a pretty hardy people. I'm gonna say that right now. You must be a pretty, pretty brave bunch. I will say though, I was reading an article yesterday uh, about a phenomenon in Australia where the lizards, they're big, iguanas, uh, they're probably, I don't want to say wrong, but figure this is 18 inches and they're roughly that, sometimes larger. I'm sorry, I can't convert in my head fast enough. Uh, 40, 50 centimeters, I think. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> my worst nightmare doing math on camera, 50-ish centimeters long, sometimes a little bit longer, and they climb up into trees to hibernate in the cold weather. And about this time of year, they start falling out of the trees and hitting people in the head. Not intentionally, but as the wind rustles the trees, and here are these dormant giant iguanas up in the trees, they occasionally fall and kabosh somebody in the head, which just seems <laughs> so dangerous <laughs> and hilarious at the same time. <laughs> oh my gosh. Lots of snakes around, so what's a few spiders? <laughs> You don't know how to drive in the snow or the rain. Oh, hey, Michelle, welcome, welcome. I'm telling you, there's so many poisonous animals in Austria. As much as I would love to see what I know is a beautiful country, terrifying <laughs> how many things you have that could kill you. <laughs> Absolutely terrifying. Oh my goodness, what did I say? I was going to put it down the bottom, wasn't I? Yes. Because I, I tend to go toward the top and then I embellish down, put a title, I embellish here, and then I might embellish down here. But we're going to switch it up today. We're going we're gonna to go down to the bottom. I probably will still put the title here-ish because I just like the way that that looks. I always feel weird putting something like a title above her head. It just feels off when I'm looking at it. Okay. Map my photos. Most of it sticks to the bush. Are you talking about the webs? The spider webs? See, 
here in the south we have two spiders that are poisonous but they're both very small and it's fairly rare I wouldn't say nobody ever gets bitten because I'm sure there's several cases every year but it's not usually fatal but you do usually need treatment and one of them is called a brown recluse and it is exactly what it sounds like it's a spider that does not like people and will try to stay away from them as much as possible it's usually found in closets or you know big blanket piles and things like that things that are not usually disturbed often and that's where they hide because they don't really want to make contact with humans. The other one is the Black Widow. And that one's a little bolder. <laughs> that one you gotta watch out for. But uh, the Brown Recluse and the Black Widow are very, are very small compared to the spiders that y'all have, all right? I've seen pictures and video of a wolf spider in Australia. I think it's called a wolf spider. And I've seen pictures of the spider wasp, which by the way, nightmares, nightmares. I don't know. <laughs> Nightmarish is all I've got. Uh, you're scared of the gators. Oh, in Mississippi? Yeah, there's a few, but they're in the swamp, of which there is not much in Mississippi. There are some in Louisiana. There's more swamp in Louisiana and Florida than in Mississippi. Where I live, it's just suburbia. Just a uh, lightly wooded suburbia. The uh, most exciting animals that we get here are goats occasionally from the farm down the street and uh, occasional uh, loose deer that are looking for grazing areas. Those are the wildest animals we get around here. More, uh, I think we get more stray cats and dogs than anything else, animal-wise. We, we do have bugs. We do have bugs. You're in the bush on the edge of the desert. Of the dessert. I wish I was having dessert. I know that's not what you meant, but it just made me hungry. Yeah, I think that's gonna look really cute. Baby goats are amazing. They're just amazing. There are some really cute videos. <laughs> some really cute videos of baby goats in pajamas. Jumping around, <laughs> having a pajama party. <laughs> Cutest thing in my life the cutest thing ever. Oh, so cute. You have wolf spiders in New York? Oh my god. Oh, Marlena. Ew, 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 ew. Not the babies. That's not good. Yeah, we've got wolf spiders here too, but they're anything like Australian version. <laughs> what are the ones called, you guys that are in Australia, that are as big as your hand? Big oogly moogly looking fellas. Uh, Inky Quill talks about them from time to time when one crawls up her window. <laughs> it sounds terrifying. <laughs> Giant spiders. Oh. We get spiders and we get wolf spiders, but they're very small. They're not, not any big deal. Did I put the, I put the tape on the wrong side? That's all right. Sarite, sarite. There we go. Because this part's going to be tucked under here, so I don't want to waste silver goodness behind the photo. No, no. So I'll just put tape on the side as well. Bird eating spiders. That is terrifying. Huntsman. Huntsman. Hey, Sylvia. Huntsman spiders. That's right. That's right. I think she was talking about one the other day while she was uh, doing a voiceover. <laughs> I will say we don't get anything poisonous that's quite that large, but we do occasionally get some of these giant moths that are about the size of your hand. 
in width. And uh, they land on the, uh, the screens every once in a while and kind of sleep for a day or two on the window screens. And then you wonder, are they dead? Because <laughs> they're not moving. And then uh, usually by the next day, they're gone. As soon as you start to wonder, are they dead? They disappear. They're quite pretty, but they're very big. Very, very big. I've scrapped a picture of one before. They were just huge. And uh, it's funny because moving south from Michigan, we never had in Michigan, the worst bugs we ever had were Japanese beetles. They kind of look like ladybugs, the little red and black spotted beetles, but they're actually orange with black spots. Might be a Luna moth, could be, it's really big. It's beautiful, but it's huge. No more spiders. No more spiders. I agree, Melissa, no more spiders. Smaller than a 50 cent piece. Oh, the one you stepped on. Yeah, ours are usually pretty small. But they do. Yeah. No more spiders. <laughs> I'm creeping myself out over here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh gosh. No, no. But that's, that's in Michigan. That was like the most annoying thing were these little, little Japanese beetles. I think they're Japanese. That's what we used to call them. I don't know if they actually are. But uh, little orange beetles with black spots that look like ladybugs, but they are not ladybugs. And they will get into your house and just go everywhere. Just everywhere. They're such a pain to get rid of. And they just, they're so tiny, they get into everything and procreate everywhere. It's truly gross. <laughs> Oh gosh. No, don't dream. Uh, June bugs. Oh yeah, June bugs are bad too. Uh, cicadas, I don't mind. So that's something that I heard someone talking about the other day, the cicadas. The cicadas are really pretty big. They're probably from the knuckle to my finger. And they're just a kind of a beetle. They're not poisonous. They're, they're not interested in humans at all. Uh, they're really not a big deal, but they're loud. So if you're familiar with say crickets or something that makes like a humming noise at night, that's what a cicada does. The difference is that cicadas <laughs> really loud. <laughs> it kind of sounds like, I'm gonna compare it to a car engine that just runs and runs and runs day and night. And during the, I believe it's the fall is when we hear them the most. Pretty sure it's the fall. But I've actually gotten used to them and I don't even notice them anymore. When I first moved down here, I couldn't sleep. They're so loud, so loud. <laughs> the Arizona scorpions, oh no. <laughs> Everyone's fave new collection. I will tell you right now, mine is uh, kind of a tie between, this is not counting Coca Vanilla because Coca Vanilla's hasn't technically come out yet. And I want to reserve judgment till I see more of it. But I like the look of Paige Evans' Bloom Street. And I like the look of Pink Fresh Studios' <sighs> Noteworthy. I believe is the one that I liked, I think, or was it my story? I like both of them, but one of them I liked a little bit more than the other, and I can't remember which one. <laughs> I, I ordered both, so <laughs> you'll see both, I promise. <laughs> oh, goodness. Those, but those two, those two really caught my eye. Bloom Street, and I think it was Noteworthy, I think. Pretty sure. Not 100% sure, but I am pretty sure. <laughs> Those two really appeal to me. Uh, as far as, but as far as boy collections go, I'm definitely excited to see Coco Vanilla's new one. I think it was called Legendary. Does that sound right? Legendary? 
and it looks really cute. I would love to see her come out. I would love to see Zoe do a, a boy collection with a lot of red, but I do know that A, red is hard. <laughs> Ed is, red is a hard sell in the scrappy world because I think a lot of people find it difficult to use. It's just such a bold, bold color. But me personally, I love red for boys pages. I absolutely love it. Two of my, both of my boys, I only have two. Both of my boys love the color red. Absolutely love it and wear it all the time. Bloom Street is stunning. It really is. There's a few collections I haven't seen enough of to make up my mind whether or not I want them. Uh, one is Heidi Swap's, is it Art Walk, I believe? I've been trying to watch the videos everybody's been posting from Creativation and I think I fell a little bit behind because there were so many, so many videos. And see how much that makes it pop? Even though there's this really busy pattern right behind it, that green just around the photo and then that silver, bam! In your face! That's what we want. Now I'm gonna tape them together because that'll make it easier to kinda move them around and make sure they're in the right direction. Do, 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 do. I think I'm gonna come up a little bit higher with that. There we go. Yeah, Coco Vanilla should be coming soon. I've seen like little peaks of it, but until I can see it like a picture, you know, you know like not, pictures are one thing, but I wanna see the physical product on video even. But that's the nice thing about the Creativation videos has been you can kind of see it in somebody's hands and it just looks different than it does in the uh, you know the beautiful digital staged pictures that they that they put out I mean it looks cool there too but <laughs> huh. it just looks different in person and in, in even on video it's been 15 years since you've scrapped is there a reason? Do you just not have time? Here's the real question, Melissa. Do you still buy product <laughs> even though you don't scrap? That would be me, okay? I would do that. <laughs> I confess. I confess to being that person who would absolutely still buy entirely too much product for someone who wasn't scrapping much. I'd do it. I'd do it in a heartbeat. Okay. All right, well that de-stickifying process didn't work quite as well as I'd hoped. They're still kind of stuck together. Erg. somewhere nah, that takes too much space we could do smile that would be lovely seeing as how these are pictures I think I like it right there maybe something else here Ooh, so many of these pieces are just huge I always find that kind of tricky to use when the pieces are enormous. I do believe this is where you're gonna live. Yep, yep, yep. We got some little cats. Don't mind a cat or three. Don't have any cats, but I don't mind them. Maybe just tuck him. Just sneaky tuck him behind the title, perhaps. We'll see how that works. You don't buy the scrappy stuff either? Yeah, I haven't found a good look at Art Walk. I, I think I would like it. <laughs> she says hesitantly. <laughs> I don't know. I 
haven't seen a, a great look at it. So I haven't decided whether or not I need it. Oh, you took up crochet, crocheting in Minecraft. Fair enough. My uh, oldest daughter and youngest son love Minecraft. I absolutely love it. I play The Sims. When I've had enough of scrappy time and I just want to do something kind of mindless, <laughs> I either start fussy cutting or I break out my video games. For sure. Hmm. I kind of... I like the cats. But I also like this camera. I think it might be kind of cute. To somehow incorporate it with this title. Hmm, they're not cooperating though. Try it kind of tucked in with this flower. We'll see. We'll think. We'll see. We'll think and we'll see. Got a little bird. I don't know if he'll say, but he's there. Got perfectly imperfect, which aren't we all? Aren't we all? I don't know if I want that on this layout, but there it is. <laughs> It'll stay there till I put something better. Stay tuned. For what? That's a weird phrase to put on there. Yes, huge ephemera is so tricky. It just really is. It's so tricky. Uh, with Vicki Booten's collections, I tend to avoid the ephemera packs and stick to the sticker book because the sizing is a little bit more in my comfort zone. And I just find it much easier to use. Much, much easier to use. Oh yes, uh, Never Grow Up, right? That's Chamel's, I believe. Yep, I ordered that one too. Because of course I did. I love Chamel stuff. I wouldn't say that I am a fangirl for Chamel because I don't necessarily feel like I have to have every one of her collections. But this last one is really cute. I really liked Field Trip. I really liked a uh, box of crayons. Well, some of box of crayons was weird, but I like the papers from box of crayons. For sure. Life. No. Best friends? That'd be weird. <laughs> this particular layout. Maybe instead of cats, we try to get birds in here. I think I'm giving up on the cats. Just sort of tuck things in and see what sticks. <laughs> uh, yeah, I saw the toner pad. That was for stamps, right? And I think you use it with the mink. And I don't have a mink and don't really want a mink. So I don't think that's something I'm going to pick up. But it is cool if you have a mink that you can now foil your stamps. That is certainly awesome. I would be very excited about that if I did that sort of minking. Stay positive. I kind of like that. It's got the same green. I like that a lot. Let me just sort of tuck that in here. There we go. Sort of tuck it in underneath. That way I can put the date of the photos. I think we're gonna have a cluster here, a cluster here, and one over here by the smile. The Nouveau Mousse. Yes, I like it. Here's the thing, don't buy 500 of them, okay? Just pick one, <laughs> maybe two, <laughs> and 
and try them. This is where I make a huge mistake is I often buy, I see, oh, I like something and then I'm like, oh, well, I like this color and that color and then I buy 10 before you're, you know, all said and done. And then I may discover, oh, it's okay, but it's not my favorite thing ever. And that's kind of disappointing because, <laughs> because now I've invested in it and I've purchased 10 of this thing. So just buy one or two, try it for yourself, see if you like it. And if so, then maybe get a couple more, but I wouldn't get a hundred of them. They'll last a long time, I'm telling you. You don't need that many. Just one or two, get a feel for it, decide if it's your jam, and go from there. That is my advice with any mixed media product. Because it goes a lot further than you expect. A lot of things come in those smaller sizes on purpose <laughs> because really it lasts a long time. It really does. It lasts a very long time and you don't need a bunch <laughs> of it to try it out. I have made that error so many times, so many times. I am serious. Dear Lizzie's new one, uh, let me think. I haven't ordered it yet, but I also haven't seen any great shots of it. I think hers was uh, with flamingos, wasn't it? I will probably get some of it. I probably won't get a ton because flamingos aren't really my jam, but uh, I do like her papers. That's my favorite. That's always my favorite part of her collections are the papers. She just has a fantastic color palette that I really enjoy. Ooh, look, we got a random little leafy thing, just sort of hanging out, having fun. I'm just gonna work through the bits and pieces here and once it feels like it's embellished enough, then I'll stop. Kind heart, fierce mind, brave spirit. While all of those things are true, <laughs> Does it need to go on this layout? Mayhaps. We'll leave that there until I decide otherwise. Melissa, the little pinkish could be used for your niece. Oh yes, the little pink kitty. I agree, that's a good idea. Thank you for that, I will do that. She is, isn't she so super cute with those little glasses? <laughs> I adore it. It's just so cute. It's something about a baby in glasses. Super cute. Super duper cute. This one says, thank my lucky stars, which I really want to use, especially because it's got this yellow, just like the title. And so I feel like it would help tie in the title quite nicely. Perhaps, perhaps. It's quite large though. Hmm. I don't think I like that as much as I liked the rainbow. Maybe I'll try to use it down here instead of this one. Mayhaps. Mayhaps you belong here. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit shorter than that last one, so it won't take up quite as much space. Still liking the look of that. Oh, come on, tuck. And tuck, and tuck. Everybody do the tuck. Make almost any color that you want. Yeah. Yeah, that Nuvo Mousse is fantastic. I really enjoy it. I would, I would, like I said, I would pick up, uh, you know, one or two colors to try it out for yourself. So what I do is I try to think about what colors do I scrap with the most? And, and just sort of maybe even look through your albums. 
just briefly and see what colors just draw me to a collection. And that is the colors that you should get in mixed media because that's the one you're actually gonna wanna use. Foolproof plan. <laughs> or close enough to foolproof, right? Close enough. All right, let's see. Grow through what you go through. Meh. Maybe here. Yeah, you know, I love the look of planners. <laughs> I love the idea of planners. <laughs> but I just don't use them. Every single year I buy a planner thinking to myself, this will be the year that I get it together <laughs> and plan things. And I have low expectations here, guys. I don't anticipate that I'm actually going to decorate said planner, okay? Because <laughs> I know better than that. But I always think, oh, this would be the time that I actually use the planner to plan the things and it'll be amazing. And uh, it never is because <laughs> I don't plan things. I'm just not a planner. That's not who I am as a person. Yeah, don't don't buy too much because the containers are actually pretty good size. They're pretty large and they're very full. You don't need a lot of that embellishment mousse to use it. It is super easy to just use a tiny little bit and it can go really far. It's one of the qualifications for my buying mixed media is how long I can make it last. Lots of frames, but I don't really jive in frames on this one. I will do a frames layout with this collection though. You have full set syndrome. <laughs> yes, I do believe you are correct, Alicia. <laughs> now, I really don't buy the whole collection. I never buy the whole collection of anything, uh, but I get close. I freely admit I get close on some collections, especially Cocoa Vanilla. That's probably the one I buy the most of and Paige Evans is likely the other one that I just tend to buy almost all of it, if not all of it. I usually kind of set myself a little goal of spending money-wise. Now, thankfully, I say all this, thankfully I am on the a Cherry on Top design team, cherryontop.com, and she lets me pick out what I play with, and so, I can order these collections. I get a little bit of, I get a budget every month that she lets me pick out what I want to play with. And so I can order some of each collection that I really like. And if I love it, then I'll order more of that collection the next month. But if it's just, okay, this was okay, this was nice, then I just use what I picked and then don't let that get into my stash, if that makes sense. Don't leave in what you're in your stash, which you won't use now. If that makes, I, I just, I'm not a fan of sticking stuff in my stash. If I can avoid it, I will. I'd rather not. <laughs> there are some things that I hoard. Coca vanilla is one, but I'd rather not hoard things. Grow through what you go. Oh, you know, I liked that, but. Now I'm thinking this might be better. Might be. You little bird are a bit out of place. Maybe I just tuck you in yonder way. I have a leaf and no flower. There was a loose flower in there, I think. Here's a yellow one. Maybe a yellow heart would be better up here. It wouldn't blend in quite as much. And add a bit of yellow at the top. And we have the silver, which might be nice, say here. 
I bought, yes, I get them from materiatop.com. Uh, sometimes I buy them, sometimes I get them from her. It depends. I try not to buy too much with my own money. I try not to because I will overspend. I will absolutely overspend. Whereas if she gives me a budget, I usually stick to that. And if I go over, then I just pay the difference. Which is really nice. So I was going to use that for the date. But this is actually set up for the date. So perhaps I pull this out. Save for later. And tuck you in. Hence. The date. Liking where that's going. I'm a fan of this loveliness. Yes, we needed another floral and I found another floral. It's just a little floral too, which is nice. I think I may replace that heart there with this floral. It's tricky though, because it's chipboard. So it's a bit dimensional, but I think I can just fit it around the banner piece. Yes. Yes, that looks lovely. Mayhaps you should go here with the blue one here. And that looks quite cute, I think. Quite cute. And then I'll have poppy stickers and enamel shapes to add as well. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Where do I buy the collections? I don't remember if I answered that. Cherryontop.com always has the new ones out pretty much first. I don't know of any other. Scrapbook.com is good too, but they don't uh, always have all the things that I want and a cherry on top usually does. So I kind of go back and forth. It depends on who gets it first because I'm super impatient. <laughs> your eye is wanting to see more yellow in the upper left hand corner of the larger picture up here it would be nice if I had some uh, like photo corners in this collection that'd be kind of cool is that would that would look nice that would look nice photos on an angle I'm just realizing and there we go makes that a bit tricky but I do still have puffy stickers don't worry we'll put something up there do you find it hard to do the visual triangle on the different sized pages um well <laughs> I don't always do a visual triangle actually I Focus more on a balance of color rather than a specific placement. Now you'll notice this little space where the larger photo meets the smaller photo. Nine times out of ten, I'm going to put embellishments there or at least the title there to kind of fill in that space and kind of square off the layout. And then I'll usually pick another area to create a diagonal flow so it leads your eye from one side to the other and through the layout not just in one place that's just generally how I roll with it but it doesn't always have to be a triangle I think triangle uh, ideally it just simplifies the design process it's a very common design principle groups of threes are interesting to the eye so as long as you have groups of three on your layout it will look interesting and kind of wants you to you will kind of want to to take that in and the reason for that is because your brain always looks for the center 
always looks for the center of things. And a group of three has a very clear center. So in this case, there we go. So in this case, when you are looking at the three clusters, you have bottom, top, center. And because I'm putting the title here, and that's intentional, in the center, that's where your eye is gonna go first, see the photos. And that's always my intention. I always want the photos to be the one thing that just, bam, catches your eye. Because that's the most important thing on my layouts, to me. In my mind and to me, the photos are what really matter. I think I might cut off, if I put this here, I mean, it probably would still go there, but I feel like I'm losing my little bird. And I rather like that little bird. See, I've come a long way, because I used to hate putting birds on layouts. I, at one point, had a little dish, <laughs> oh boy, little dish on my desk full of bird ephemera and stickers <laughs> that I was just sure someday I was going to give to someone who loves birds. <laughs> uh, I finally ended up giving them to my daughter and, uh, and she, she was fine. She had fun with it. She made use of it. There we go. And I'll probably piece it back together in a uh, slightly more pleasing way to my eye. That's not working. I just give up on that one. Goodbye, Leaf. Off you go. Hey, Dee, welcome, welcome. Yes, we're just a glue in a way, finishing up things. So very exciting. My daughter is away for the weekend. My daughter, Chloe, she's my oldest with the scouts and she is going to stay the night on a submarine with her troop. And she is so excited. <laughs> I would be too. She's so excited to do this and I just can't, I can't believe she's getting to do it. It's so cool. My husband said it's a pretty common uh, outing for scout troops. He did one when he was uh, in Boy Scouts. And my oldest son was supposed to, but he had back surgery, so he wasn't able to go. But his troop did go and do it as well. I don't know if he would be able to do it now because they have to. I think they have to sleep on the the bunk beds in there, and he has some limitations on on using his back and ways he can sleep. He has a blow up mattress though, so he can go camping, which he loves, absolutely loves. You may hear him in the background; he's quite loud all of the time. <laughs> uh, he's he's just a, a loud person. You know, you know, there's just some people like that who just don't have a full sense of their volume. <laughs> He's one of those people. <laughs> yes, they get to get a tour of the submarine and then they get to stay the night in those little bunks that the sailors sleep in. And I believe these are retired submarines, you know, the, the ones that have been taken out of action if I remember correctly. And I just thought, how cool is that? That just sounds so cool. I absolutely thought that sounded really cool. I don't know if I could handle it. I am a little claustrophobic, but the idea <laughs> sounds really neat. And my husband's gonna go up tomorrow and spend the day with them so that he can take pictures for me because we need pictures, right? We do, we have to have photos. Can't just not have photos of an incredible experience like that. Nah. Under acceptable. <laughs> oh gosh. 
any scrap while sitting in bed? Uh, I don't know that I would scrapbook. I think I'd lose all the pieces. But I have fussy cut or hand stitched while in bed or on the couch. Yes, yes. Well, we have a port in Louisiana or southern Mississippi, I believe. I think there's a naval port down here somewhere. And uh, yeah, so they get uh, the submarines in there for the tourists and for uh, like practice runs and things. Yeah, I think if you had if you had a lap table, that might work. You just have to be careful. I get really excitable. <laughs> Shocking, I know. I get very excitable and forget what I'm doing. And so if I tried to, like Inky Quill does, couch scrap, oh, y'all, I would get stuff everywhere. Just everywhere. <laughs> Granted, she's talking about pocket pages, which I assume would be a little easier. You're working on a smaller scale and you can put finished straight in the pocket as opposed to just having bits and pieces everywhere. But, uh, yeah, I just get a little overexcited and I'll stand up and have... <laughs> everything in my lap. <laughs> Oops. And now it is everywhere. I've been banned from needlepoint in the <laughs> living room though. <laughs> Cause I kept losing needles and my husband would find them with his feet and he did not appreciate that. If you can imagine, did not appreciate that. bird little bird there you are there you are okay yes I like that cluster up there I don't know why but it just really like it we're finishing up we're finishing up here we go oh yes <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. I am a mess. <laughs> that's, all, that's all you need to know. So what do we think? You mentioned you wanted to see some yellow up in this corner. Mayhaps a bird. So it kind of fits quite nicely in here. I will gently put him there so I can think about him. I'm gonna grab some of these puppy stickers or maybe just a little heart. Maybe just a little heart where the bird is. I have a yellow one of those too. I have, oh, I didn't adhere this fella down. Almost missed a piece. Have you ever finished a layout and then picked it up to put it away or just move it and then pieces started falling off because you forgot to glue them down. That happens to me all the time. All of the time. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I do that all the time. It's so crazy. And I'm like, oh no, and I have to go glue it back down. I probably could have put a bird there instead of a, a heart. This is probably a terrible idea, but I'm gonna see if I can cover that up. Cause I'd really like to use this bird. Oh, uh -huh. pulled it off. I'll glue that back onto something else. I like, because I went with the bird theme, I kind of wanna stay with the bird theme and just lots of birds, <laughs> all the birds. <laughs> I think I'll put a little flower up here by this bird. That might be quite cute. Maybe tuck one yonder way. Andrea 
Bethke. That name sounds very familiar to me. Why does that name sound familiar to me? I don't know. I may have seen her work. Quite possible. Because I do spend a lot of time on Instagram. Always looking for inspiration. Whether it's for scrapbooking or for painting. Let me try the heart. I think just the heart might be okay. I think the bird was drawing a little bit too much attention to itself and kind of drawing away from the, the three. So I will save him for another day. We will do another bird layout some other time. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of blue over here. That's quite cute. What can we do with these enamel shapes? Got some little circles. Can pop those around, little enamel dots. Now, the one thing I probably won't do is put an enamel dot underneath of the bird. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Fairy tale scrapbook. I will look her up and check it out. Because that sounds really neat. That she does kind of couch scrappy style. That sounds really cool. Maybe tuck a heart yonder way. Yep, yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Here, this one has a little bird on it. We need to find a place for him. <laughs> Why not? There's also a cat on here. <laughs> I could I could add a cat. I'm not going to, but I could. <laughs> huh. Oh, there's another one with a bird, but it's kind of big. This one's kind of big too. Let me just grab the smaller one, I think that there. So pretty simple. It's a pretty simple page, but I like it. I enjoy it. Bring in some Nuvo and some Heidi Swap Color Shine and call it done. Oh, silver. I have silver right here. Excellent. That is a great idea. Fill in the empty space with scrappy stuff. Brilliant. I'm a fan. I support this idea. I would probably send such the said scrappy stuff a flying because I'm just as active in my sleep as I am in person. Uh, my poor husband. He's used to it. He really is. He just moves. <laughs> he just, he just uh, adjusts to my insanity. I am very, very blessed. Well, I was gonna splatter with Heidi Salt Color Shine, but hmm, there's no gold on this layout. <laughs> it's very silver. I mean, I still could go for it because it's it's sort of yellow, right? <laughs> Am I just justifying at this point so that I can use the Heidi's Web Color Shine? Perhaps. <laughs> Maybe. Where else can I put dots? I put one here. I don't really want to put one all over the photo, but we'll put them there. Well, that looks nice. Mayhaps we put one here. Not on the bird's head, but above the bird's head. Yep. 
Yeah, I'm going to do it anyway. Hey, Christy. Oh, what collection are the puppy stickers from? Same collection. It's all from Dear Lizzie, She's Magic. Everything that I used is from that collection. I like sticking to a collection. I like... It just coordinates so well when I stick to one collection. Here we go. I'll just go light with the splatter. So it doesn't draw too much attention to itself. Which it does sometimes. If I go crazy with the splatter, it uh, can sometimes draw a bit too much attention to itself, and that's not usually the intention. We'll put just a little. There. Not a lot, just a little. You toss and turn to yes now my husband does snore occasionally so I think fair is fair <laughs> yes that's awesome Christy see I tried uh, travelers notebooks for a while and I have a few uh, on here on the on the playlist if you don't know I keep all of my videos organized into playlists and if you ever kind of find yourself where you're like oh, I really enjoyed that scrap list Sunday I want to see more of those they're all in a playlist <laughs> if you miss the grab bag challenge they're all in a playlist I wanted to make it really easy for you guys to find the series that you like the most and it helps me too because once in a while I'll have somebody ask me hey Laura uh, did you do a video about XYZ and in my mind I know what series it's from but I don't necessarily remember the title and so I'll go look in the playlist and I can usually find it usually this came out really cute <laughs> I kind of feel like maybe I need to connect this somehow maybe with a little scrap let's see what I've got and see if I like it I think I have a scrap of, yeah, here. I have a scrap of the red. Might look cool to do like a little banner piece just there. Might even push that up just a hair. It says no. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I want to create a little banner right there. Thank you, Leisha. Yeah, see, I don't know if I finished that thought. I did uh, Traveler's Notebooks for a little while, and I was really excited about them. I thought they were really nice, that they're really accessible because they're so small, and you don't have to put them in page protectors, which is nice because I'm not a, a huge fan of page protectors on smaller layouts. But then I started doing them and I just found it wasn't enough space for me. I'm so used to scrapping big that scrapping small just <laughs> frustrated the tar out of me. Especially because no matter what I did, the Traveler's Notebooks ended up so ridiculously chunky. And I mean ridiculous. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I have a flip through of one up in those playlists, in that playlist somewhere. And I'm not joking. It was huge. Huge. Absolutely enormous. Oh, you use a CPAP. Mm-hmm. That'll do it too. Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab one just to show you what I mean.
So I had to disassemble the traveler's notebook and put it in this wooden cover because look at this. Look at this. This is insane. <laughs> no notebook deserves this. <laughs> it literally busted at the seams and I had to make a, a book out of it with binder rings because it was so huge. It was so big. Plus, the other thing is I actually really enjoy at least three by four sized photos. And I feel like in a traveler's notebook, it works better if you use smaller photos, which makes sense. It's a smaller format. So it absolutely makes sense, but I just, see, I couldn't help myself. I've got wood veneer in here. I've got puffy stickers in here. I can't help myself. I have no self-control when it comes to the dimensional things. I've got layers of embellishments in here. I mean, don't get me wrong. The pages came out super cute. I love times like this when I could get a, you know, a little interactive pocket thing happening. Love that. But I just can't work within the confines of this size. It's just too small for me. And trying to go this simple in design just frustrates me. I want to add all the things. <laughs> And so trying to keep it simple was really hard, obviously. <laughs> I've got fringe, oh my goodness. I have a bow, <laughs> a very dimensional bow. I, I mean, I enjoyed the challenge of it, but ultimately, know thyself <laughs> comes to mind. <laughs> And the worst part is about half, what I had done with this one was to try to avoid bulk. I had taped every other page together so that I was only doing half the number of layouts as you could technically do in a TN. Thought I had solved my problem. Clearly not. <laughs> I, I agree. Dimensions and pop dots and uh, chipboard and <laughs> puffy stickers and layers, 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 layers. That is the name of my game. <laughs> so it just, it just, you have to know yourself, but I'm glad I tried it. It was fun. It was great. Problem is I currently have about five or 10 empty traveler's notebooks with no intention of using them. <laughs> I'll probably go to an, a crop in the future and just share. That's likely what I'll do. So I think that came out pretty cute. I just need to add my journaling and the date and this one is done. I do really like what this uh, little banner kind of connected the two. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm trying to decide if it needs another one like maybe this pretty blue yeah why not I never saw a layer I didn't like <laughs> there we go we'll just pop it on there just like just like that Or just like that ish. Yeah, I kind of like that. It's busy, but that's all right. Yes, I love the Smashbook because it's a little bit bigger in size. It's about, I think it's seven by nine, I believe, inches. And that just seems to be a better size for me. 
because a traveler's notebook spread, like both pages, is four by eight. No, eight by eight, it's a square. Each individual page is four by eight. And that's just not big enough for me. I like larger photos. I don't really enjoy scrapping, say two by twos and the like. I just don't like them. I do it occasionally, but most of the time I'd rather do three by fours is usually as small as I'll go. If I'm doing a grid layout and the pictures are not great quality, I don't mind printing them a little bit smaller, maybe three by three, <laughs> but I struggle with smaller photos. I really do like the large ones because the photos are the point for me. So that's why. Let's, but if you were doing, like you were saying, a re, what books you've read, then the pictures aren't quite as important. So it doesn't really matter if they're tiny, you know? And in my smash book, I like that I can do the interactive, you know, flipping things open and pulling tags out. And even if it gets a little bit chunky, that's okay because it's spiral bound. So it can handle a little bit of chunk and not feel like it's going to explode. That traveler's notebook literally exploded and the seams. <laughs> hey, Shell, we're just finishing up, but I'm glad you could pop on. We're just talking about uh, traveler's notebooks. I love the look of them. Let me tell you, there are several scrappers who do amazing work with traveler's notebooks. I also love watching people who do six by eight scrapping. <clears throat> I love that size so much, but with five kids, <laughs> I would honestly have twice as many albums as I currently have, and it would take up just as much space, I think, just as much space, even though I do love them. I use them for December daily, and every year I think, oh, I have so much fun in this. <laughs> Maybe if and when I don't have a bunch of kids at home which is many, many years off, then perhaps I would switch to six by eight if I was just scrapping the fun things that I do. <laughs> then maybe, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, see, I love Traveler's Notebook the way it looks, but for me, it's just not feasible. I was just showing the girls this massive chunker of a Traveler's Notebook I made and I even bought several of these wooden covers thinking, oh, I found the solution. I'll just do this. But the problem is look at how much space this takes up on the shelf. I mean, width wise, that's a lot of space for such a small book. It just really wasn't storage wise. It just wasn't feasible. I wasn't enjoying it as much as I wanted to be. I wanted to like it, but, uh, and I think I gave it a good try. I did two of these, I think. You can scrap lift anything I share, Leisha. Anything, even if it's exactly, I don't care. Yes. See, that's awesome, Christy. I would do that. If I didn't have so many photos to scrap of the kids, I, if it was just scrapping for me, then I probably would do more six by eights. Absolutely. Yeah, no, you're 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 always welcome to scrap lift anything I, I post, anything. I don't mind at all. That's why I share is to give people ideas because I have found so many ideas on YouTube and Pinterest and Instagram. And I thought, you know, if if I'm finding inspiration on here, surely someone else would find some inspiration in, in my work. And so I share it. Because I thought, why not? <laughs> Plus I love chatting with y'all. It's always nice to hear some feedback on what I'm doing. You did one about silly selfies that your husband sends you. That is awesome. My husband never takes selfies. We rarely have pictures of he and I together or of him by himself because he does not ever take selfies. I do occasionally, I probably do every other month. If I'm feeling really nice that day, <laughs> I think I look good, then I'll go take a selfie. Uh, but other than that, I don't really do a lot, but such is life with kids. 
<laughs> my husband never takes selfies. And the couple that he has taken, like if, if the kids were, he was with the kids and they were doing something fun and he was trying to get a picture with the kids, his faces are hysterical because he's really concentrating on holding the phone in a certain direction and <laughs> he either cuts his face off or someone else's face <laughs> or he just looks like he's <laughs> concentrating really hard and doesn't smile. <laughs> Bless him. Oh my gosh. I will definitely go look it up, Christy. I will go look those up. I love that you have them on your channel. I want to see it. That sounds amazing. Paige Evans stores all her books in a caddy style. Yeah, I saw it in baskets, right? Doesn't she do her mini albums in baskets? But she did, she does small ones. She does like four by four ones. And I think I could be okay with that. But because this one's so tall, because it's, I think, I think this is eight and a half inches tall, this, uh, this board. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's held up. <laughs> and the kids do like looking at it. I just got exacerbate, exasperated with it. Oh man. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh my gosh. You are welcome. I understand, Leisha. That's why we do Scrap Lift Sundays twice a month. Because I always find layouts that I'm like, I love this. I want to make a layout that looks just like this. Maybe just with a different collection. And so Miranda and I figured if we did Scrap Lift Sunday, we're right up front saying, look, guys, this is a total scrap lift. <laughs> Please don't be offended. We're not trying to steal your ideas. We're just copying a really awesome inspiration. And so that's what right up front we call it Scrap Lift Sunday so that you know going into it, this is not something that we completely created the idea out of nothing. And I think it's a great way to get out of a funk. I think it's a great way to get yourself started. Just get you started, especially if you haven't scrapped in a while. It's really nice to let someone else's design inspire you and just, just kind of get you moving down that path, you know? And it's like, oh, and start playing with the embellishments. And the next thing you know, you're finished and your layout may look nothing like that layout, but it's you, it's your style. And I love how that happens. That happens all the time and I love that. It's funny, this is a little wild, but <laughs> I like it. <laughs> She would love it. She'll love it because it's got lots of stuff on it. And she likes she likes it when the layouts I make for her have lots of stuff. My girls have been into the albums a lot lately, which is making me very, very happy. He looks like a total creeper. Oh! Now I gotta tell you a story, Christy, really quick before we go, because we're gonna go, but I have like 6% left on my phone. Uh, really quickly, I was sitting here scrapping one night on camera, not live, but on camera, and I had the blinds open because I'm right in front of a window. And dead of night, I look up and my husband's face is right against the window. <laughs> he scared the bejesus out of me. And I about fell out of my chair because I was not expecting <laughs> to see a face in my window. <laughs> oh, I did. I screamed. I screamed and about fell out of my chair. Oh, that man is hilarious. He gets me so often. He's so quiet. He'll walk up behind me so quiet. And I'll be so concentrated on something I'm doing. And then he'll... <laughs> Just be here, <laughs> right next to me, <laughs> and startle me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Crazy, crazy. See, my kids can't do that. They're too noisy. I hear them coming a mile away, but he is sneaky. All right, guys, that's it for this time. This was a lot of fun. I like this collection quite a lot. 
because of the pastels. If you've watched me for a while, you know I really love pastels with a bit of navy. That's kind of my favorite combination. And uh, so this one, this this collection really, she gets me. <laughs> Dear Lizzie gets me. And uh, I really enjoy this one quite a lot. But that's it for this one. If you have any questions or if you're watching on the replay, feel free to comment below and I will come back and respond. I do love talking to you guys and really enjoy these lives. And uh, I even like commenting back because I have a lot of fun when people have questions and that I can actually answer, then I feel really important. <laughs> But that's it for me, guys. I hope you had a good time. This was so much fun. Your ex-boyfriend did that in the front window. Oh my gosh. Well, see, our backyard is gated. Like, it's completely fenced in. No one's going to sneak in our backyard. <laughs> Except my husband, apparently. <laughs> I live here, too. <laughs> that's brilliant, Dee. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> No, he knows I'm I get really deeply concentrated when I scrap and I tend to block out the world But that's it for me guys. I will let you go. It is getting late here in Mississippi and I'll see you next week Bye